Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there is an invisible economy that uh, even King Jesus has taken to the next degree now. Because after the blood has been shed, now principalities and powers that are demonic have been stripped of their ability to withhold, you know, certain aspects of God's goodness from the saints, from the people of God. So is is a higher bracket of angelic activity now that God has sent forth ministering spirits. There's a higher bracket of uh, authority now that Jesus has shed his blood. So you, you, you can command things. You can command harvests. You can command wealth. You have sonship now as your position. Um, let me say something real powerful to you. Do you know the difference between the Old Testament prophet and the New Testament prophet? And the Lord said this to me. The difference is that the Old Testament prophet wasn't called a son. Now the New Testament prophet is called the son. If you notice what he said that uh, um, God does nothing in the earth unless he reveals it to his servant, his servant, his servant, the prophet. See, now prophets are not in the bracket of servants, though the prophet serves, but the prophet is in the bracket of son. And so the difference between like you see the flow of the prophet in the Old Testament and the New Testament is that the Old Testament prophet was a servant. This New Testament prophet is a son and Jesus is the first fruit of the New Testament prophet, the New Testament apostle. He's the first fruit, because if you look at it, that's why King Jesus said a prophet is without honor in his own country, which shows you that God created the prophet for honor. And that's why God will even emphasize that the prophet is without honor. And then this is the geography. This is the location where he's without what he was created to receive. So saints, God gives you a prophet as a, as a, um, the direction of your honor. That's why God puts a prophet in your life for you to honor them. You honor them with your money. You honor them with your time. You honor them with your body, meaning that you don't give your body over to the very things that they're teaching against. You see what I'm saying? You honor them with their wor with your words. You stay in alignment with what they taught you. You don't you don't go into things that uh, they they obviously have. Uh, presented to you as incorrect or wrong or favor stopping. Do you know that there's favor stopping words? There's favor stopping deeds. There's favor stopping uh, reactions. There's favor stopping uh, conduct. And you, you want to stay as far as possible away from favor stopping traits. Stay in the bracket of what keeps the favor increasing rather than declining. But Going from one wealth gate to the next is really going from one level of financial stewardship to the next. The Lord is always thinking about increasing your money. That's on his heart. And that's why he'll use your apostle mouth to convey the message to you of what time you're in. Like right now, we're in a supernatural money moving time. If you remember, I told you all that uh, weeks ago. We're in a time like that right now where the wealth angels are on earth looking for the child of God to take their rightful place in speaking financial uh, success, speaking financial events, speaking. Don't just name your seed. Speak financial events, decree and declare things. Saints, the other day I was decreeing and declaring and the fire of God went up from my, 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 my legs up to my body. Felt like somebody had, had lit up ignition and all from decreeing and declaring. I decree and I declare stuff over you all, my partners. I decree and declare stuff over you all that watch my ministry. I decree and I declare stuff over you all's life. Don't. Be silent. Wealth being on you will give you a verbal declaration awareness, a verbal 
declaration awareness, a verbal declaration awareness. Who can write down this line? A verbal declaration awareness. When wealth is on you, you will have a verbal um, and a vocabulary given to you of victory. And your, 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 your step out of just declaring and decreeing to prophesying. And when you shift over to prophesying, you'll feel the Holy Spirit filling your heart with joy. If I could tell you something that's amazing is that when you step over from declaration to prophesying, you will feel the shift and it, 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 will, it will bring you great joy. Saints, there's something that happens when God takes over your mouth to prophesy stuff about your life that your soul starts being filled with great happiness and great energy. And remember, I told you that you got to be in the right place in your soul to do this. Many people don't decree and declare stuff over their day because their soul not even in right, right standing, is not in the right standing with God. And when I say that, I mean your, 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 your focus, your soundness is not sh good. When you don't have a sound mind, you'll forget to pray throughout the day. Just always remember that. But the more you praise God throughout your day, the more happy you'll feel, the more strength you'll feel, the more joy you'll feel, the more uh, excitement you'll feel, the more that you praise God throughout your day. Talk to the Lord about everything. Talk to the Lord about everything. I thank God for everything. I thank God for every single thing around me. And I was always like that, even when uh, you know, I'm in situations that were uh, very uncomfortable. You always thank God because there's an invisible economy always working towards you for you. Saints, supernatural money always moving towards you. If you're not in position to receive it, it just goes to someone who is. It's always coming towards you. That's why if you live a life trusting yourself, then you're going to have to eat the fruits thereof. A lot of people trust themselves, then they get mad when people that do trust God get results. Well, th that's, that just comes with the territory. If you're going to get results, you got to be willing to trust God and not trust yourself. If you trust yourself, you'll be over your money. You'll decide how your money going to be spent. You're all over your money. You, you hide your money. You save your money. Well, that's you do that. But when somebody is honoring God, there is a supernatural grace on them that keeps getting higher and higher to eradicate the demon of lack from their path, the demon of destruction and famine from their path. Listen to what I'm saying here. The demon of lack, the demon of famine, the demon of destruction, they are there in your life to magnify sorrow. That's what they're there for. Magnify sorrow, magnify stress, and magnify sin. Magnify sorrow, magnify stress, magnify sin. Magnify slavery. Magnify sorrow, magnify stress, magnify sin, and magnify slavery. The spirit of lack, the spirit of destruction, the spirit of famine is in your life Oppose your life to magnify stress, sin, sorrow, slavery. And it is through God's kingdom power and how he has set up his kingdom that when one walks by it, they step into the invisible economy. Now, God's invisible economy was promised to, uh, what's her name? Uh, it was promised to uh, the woman at Zarephath. The woman at Zarephath, if you remember, the woman at Zarephath was in a place where um, she needed to move past into abundance. 
And if you notice what takes place is that once she passes the seed test, now we're seeing that prophet Elijah prophesies to her, now you will step into this invisible economy. The invisible economy is a place where God makes something happen for you even though you were up against all odds. It's where God does something for you that you couldn't even, uh, you couldn't perceive, you couldn't detect. It's spontaneous, it's out of the blue. Um, it is the Father's uh, miraculous power for provisional miracles. Now, God uses provisional miracles because he uses provisional miracles to restore back your financial dignity, your financial strength, your financial dominion, your financial edge. He uses provisional miracles to expedite your recovery time. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, he uses provisional miracles to give a boost to your faith and your hope and your love. Father, I thank you right now for provisional miracles in my life this week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I thank you right now for provisional miracles in my life this week. Father, I receive your provisional power moving in my direction on my behalf in my finances, in my situation. Lord, I thank you right now. I receive your good plans. I receive the wealth angels moving and ministering for me. Oh, Lord of hosts, thank you right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, I praise you right now for provisional miracles in my life. See, I'm showing you how to tap in to wealth gates. Father, I thank you right now for the wealth gate that I, I have entered into right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Father, I thank you right now for the wealth gate that I have just entered into. And as I walk through these wealth gates, I receive everything that you have for me. I receive every provision, every substance, every wealth. I receive abundance. I receive overflow. My cup is running over because I'm living out of your wealth gates right now. And Lord, by your grace and power, I go from one wealth gate to the next. And I take a hold. Don't become ritualistic. Don't become ritualistic. Don't become ritualistic. Uh, decreeing and declaring is something that's spontaneous and is also intentional. You build your way up in decreeing and declaring. And um, it affects how you pray prophetically. You see, that, that was just a demonstration of prophetic prayer. And the minute that you do that, you activate your divine imagination, which is in your soul. That's a prosperous soul. A prosperous soul has imaginations of what the word of God promised. I want you to see that. I want you to see that. A prosperous soul will think about the demonstration of prosperity, wealth, increase, finances, um, health in the body, it'll, it'll prophesy things. Now, saints, I want, I want you to see this. God will use provisional miracles to jumpstart you the same way he'll use health miracles, health miracles to jumpstart you. Because when God does health miracles, he, he, he set you back up in health so that you can eat different and, you know, change different stuff. So now it is you doing it. All right. Now, the same way, let's go over to wealth miracles where God will, will supply you uh, financial strength. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, thank you for supplying me financial strength. Lord, I thank you right now for supplying me financial strength. Thank you so much, Lord, for taking good care of me. I praise you. I believe in you. I trust you. When God supplies uh, wealth miracles to you, it is to get you back on your feet, to get you back in your sound mind, back in your dominion, back in your uh, confidence. You see what I'm saying? 
Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, the righteous are as bold as a lion. So that boldness is, is God's motive for supplying you with wealth miracles. So he does that a lot. A lot of times people don't do everything right financially. We know that. And then God still breaks open and, and brings financial strength because God is giving them an edge, a power, a grace, a strength. Let me say this to you. When you get to the place of financial miracles and provisional miracles, don't rob God when it comes. Don't rob God when it comes. If money ever gets into your hands and you don't think about sowing, you don't sow, it's because you're a thief. God has to deliver everybody from being a thief. Anytime God puts money in your hands is because he's looking for honor from you. If you don't honor him, it's because you're a thief. And thieves, they not only miss God in one place, they miss God in other places as well because they're not sensitive. They harden their heart. You got to harden your heart not to sow. Because when you don't sow, there's something that happens in your heart that makes you deny the voice of God. Just remember this. And that's why I started off my ministry with, with such a intensity of sowing. And I'm still intensely sowing today because there's a sensitivity that I have to my father. When you don't sow, your heart steps into hardness. It becomes impotent. It becomes uh, uh, stony. And, and, and there's certain things that you take on that, that is demonic in your character. And you may not discern it off top, but over time, if you ever study what people do that, that heart in their heart, they, they become uh, grievous to the Holy Spirit in their decision making. Their choices don't bring him happiness. They, they do stuff that's not uh, required, wanted, instructed, and so you don't want to take yourself there. Don't open yourself up to a portal that's adversarial to your sonship. Don't open up yourself to a portal that's adversarial to your royal priesthood, your holy nation. Don't open up yourself to things that go against your born again qualities, your born again nature. Because now you tap right back into the world. You tap right back into being an enemy of God. Because James chapter four says that he that is a friend with the world is an enemy of God. So you tap back into being an enemy of God and you betray friendship. Stay in the mindset of sowing. Do you even think about sowing big? Some of y'all don't be thinking about sowing $2,000. Some of y'all don't be thinking about sowing $5,000. Some of y'all not trying to be the biggest sower in a ministry. Something wrong with your heart. The first man that God created, God created that man to be obsessed with sowing. God created that man to think about the seed. That's all he was thinking about. He wasn't thinking about no woman. He wasn't thinking about no children because they did not exist. That man was thinking about what am I going to sow next? What am I going to believe God for next? What am I going to experience in the harvest? How God going to feel when he see this seed I'm about to sow next? And that's what they was thinking. That's what he was thinking about. Abel came on the scene and tapped right back in to his father's original flow before corruption. Wow. Wow. Seed mindfulness, seed consciousness. Mm, 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 mm. Thinking about the seed, pondering about the seed, wondering about the seed, looking for the seed, hungry for the seed, thirsty for the seed, intentional about the seed, seed trained.
When you're a thousand dollar sower, you always remember that God is giving someone else's assignment to you. That's why you're a thousand dollar sower. Because you're, 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 you're doubling up on the seed is because somebody has hardened their heart about seed sowing. So the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit got work that he want to be done on earth, he'll use you to walk in uh, substitution to what they were assigned to do. And that's why uh, when you are a thousand dollar sore, you'll feel a burden on you. The reason why you feel a burden on you, God is showing you, he's communicating to you. I trust you. Don't let me down. Uh, uh, and, and you got to, you got to interpret why you feel the burden. The burden is not God's disapproval. The burden is God's approval. And God is actually banking on you that you will not uh, give a deaf ear to him like others have. He's banking on you that you won't harden your heart like other people have. He's looking to you that you won't let the serpent take you out like other people have. See, see, see you got to understand when, when, when God put in pressure and, and burdens on you, his burden is light. And remember when he said, let there be light, it was because that was creation power he was releasing. So when God put a burden on you, his burden is light. So I want you to catch this. His burden is a creation power. So, so you got to understand sometimes you feel uh, birth pains, but something is being created out of you. You, you see, when, when that child coming forth, then all that static and all that uh, awkwardness, that's all the, the symbols of what's coming forth. When you are a bountiful sower, God is giving you other people's mantles, other people's promotions, other people's increase. That's why he gives you certain seed amounts and you start sowing prophetically. You don't understand. Why did I give $3,000? Why did I give this $1,000? Why am I giving $1,400? Why am I giving to it? Why do I hear this in my spirit? Why do I hear this in my spirit? And you don't understand. The father is creating a covenant with you and checking you out. And he's pitting other people's assignments on you because he, he actually going to give you their harvests too. That's why a lot of times uh, uh, people end up with five cars, you're like, well, they're only one person. Why they got five cars? Why they got 10 cars? And there's people that need a car. See, 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 that's not prosperity and that's not righteousness. That's you looking at life through the lens of the world. See, that's how the world think. The world think if this man got five, then he need to share it and give this other man two. No, no, no. But in God's eyes, God gives you according to your obedience to his word. God gives you harvests according to your sowing. So, so how the world look at it, the world look at it as, you know, this, this man, uh, he, he got, he got, he got, he got 20 million. This man up here, he only got uh, uh, 10,000. Well, well, he needs to give some of that 20 million to a man with 10,000. That's not how God works. God will actually take the man 10,000 and give it to the man with the 20 million and tell the man, keep it, run on. I don't want him to have it. The man with the 10,000 is, is, is a man that don't sow. He don't honor God. He don't believe God's system. He hardens his heart. He doesn't listen to God's instruction. He decides to follow his own understanding. And God will give that man with the 20 million. Another man will have 500 million. And, and a man have 50,000. And God will take the 50,000 out of that man's hand and give it to the man with 500 million. And somebody, the world will look and say, no, that man with the 500 million need to be given to the man with the 50,000. And God will say, no, I'm taking it from him because I'm giving it to the one 
that believes in me and trusts me and gives me the platform for me to perform my greatness on. The seed sower that gives big is a platform for Jehovah God to perform on. Everything that they do is led by extreme faith and expectation. Big sowers are dominated by the spirit of hope. Big sowers are dominated by the spirit of hope. Big sowers have a grace to dream. And dreaming is developing another dimension of cheerful giving in them. Dreaming is developing another dimension of cheerful giving in them. People give big seeds because of their big faith in God. If you ever want to know how a man sees God, just watch his sowing. He sows small, he sees God small. <laughs> it's, it's no secret about it. He sows big, he sees God's big. He sees God big. A man's perspective and a man's, uh, uh, his opinion of God is exposed in his seed sowing. There are different levels of sowers. But the word of God says, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I believe that's verse 6, that he that soweth bountifully will reap bountifully. He that soweth sparingly rather will reap sparingly. And he that saw it bountifully will reap bountifully. Is is telling you um, how God made you to activate the the height of life you live, the width of life, the quality of life that you live in is decided by you. Sometimes people get in bad situations and say, "I'm not going to sow. I'm gonna work my way up. Then I'll sow." But you don't understand you get into the bad situation because God will give you a consequence for not sowing. Joel chapter two is God saying he sent canker worms and palmer worms and caterpillars because the people was not walking in his system. So he pit them underneath demonic uh, 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 demonic results. They was in lack. They wasn't seeing the fruit of their labor. They wasn't living big. They were beggars. They was going through hardship financially, struggling. And all the stuff that was going on against them, and this was simply a result of them not following God's system. I'm telling you in life, sometimes you look at stuff and say, well, I, I'm, I'm going to ignore God. I'm going to work my way and I'm going to handle all my stuff. And, and th this is how I'm going to come out. And you don't understand you're in that situation because you because that's what you've been doing. Your car get repossessed, eviction, all this stuff. And you're like, okay, forget all that. I don't need to sow. I need to keep myself, make sure I'm, and I, all the different type of stuff. You don't understand. The car got repossessed because God saw that you wasn't sowing. Imagine if stuff happened bad against you and then your solution is, okay, this, this is a sign for me not to sow. <laughs> and the stuff is happening bad because you wasn't already sowing. Mind you, that happened to a lot of people, especially in the history of believers and people that believe and say Jesus is Lord, that happened a lot with people. Like they use their very disadvantages as a reason of why they shouldn't honor God. And they don't understand that the disadvantages are multiplying because they're not honoring God. 
and there's no protection, there's no hedge, and Satan can plug them there, and Satan could fight them there, and Satan could win them there, and Satan could attack them there, and, and Satan doing all type of stuff and having a field day in their life because there's no hedge that comes from honor around them. If any person believes that they have in their self the power to protect, provide for themselves without God's hands, God will let you live a life of that bracket as well. And he'll let you see. He'll let you live by the sweat of your brow instead of the, 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 the blood covenant. And the sweat of the brow is difficult. That's why you're sweating. You're sweating because you 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 working extra. You working overtime trying to make something happen, and it's still not happening. After you work overtime, you getting stressed out. You get and, and saints when people um when people live in flesh, financial mindsets, they talk different. When people live in flesh, financial mindsets, their their counsel is different. When I say flesh, financial mindset, I mean that they they are fleshly. So, so they'll talk to you out of the bracket of their stubbornness or their foolishness. They'll give you advice out of their own rebellion to God's system. Those are people be telling them, I, you ain't got to give no preacher no money, get no harvest. You know, you know, God got this, God got a plan for our life. We in a new covenant. God not trying to do our, and, and the people talk, they talk a certain way because they're talking out of Pharaoh's spirit. See, are you in Pharaoh's house or are you in God's house? Because God's house got different rules, different vocabulary, different choice of words. God's house. God's house has a different perspective and point of view. Every money has a mission. Every money has a ministry. And God gives you money so that you can fulfill your ministry towards him. The sower must not put so much confidence in one seed that the sower retires from hearing God for a moment. L listen to what I'm telling you. This powerful here. The sower must not put confidence, so much confidence in one seed that the sower takes a break and retires from hearing God for a moment. Let me give you an example. I sold $10,000. And then a couple of days later, I sold $6,000. If I put my confidence in the 10, I will ignore the opportunity for the six. Oftentimes people, they celebrate a sewing accomplishment so strong that in their celebration, they don't hear that God is, is, is pulling for another angle on you. He's pulling for another uh, leap and stretch to your faith. And so they, they sow the seed and then they shut down. They're like, okay, well, since I sowed that seed, God ain't going to say nothing to me right now. And saints, I, I want you to hear me. Because if you're going to live in multi-millionaire status, you're going to have to have this professional way in you. There are people that sow and then they go until they believe it's the next time to sow. And God will have you sow and come back again. By the way, Joseph, I see you do that. Joseph, jo uh, Joseph, all the way in Canada, I believe. One of my sons, and and he he he, I'll see him. He'll sow, and then he'll come back again and sow. And and, and, and is 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 so refreshing for me because I I know that's how I operate as well. 
I'll show something is real excited, it's real historical, it's real monumental, memorial. And then because you're in the Holy Ghost, you're in the spirit, you'll hear God telling you to sow again. You see what I'm saying? Because you're in the spirit. When you're in the spirit, you'll hear God doubling back and giving you more instructions to see what, how far he could take you. Now, saints, imagine it's God's eye that's watching you. And this is the one that's going to give you the increase. So if you impressive to him, what you think going to happen? He the one watching you. He the one instructing you. And see, I, let me give you a secret about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost knows the Father because that's the Father's spirit. That's who the Father is in spirit form. That's deep within the Father. So if you look at their Father, no, 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 the, well, the Spirit that's in him. So that's who the Holy Ghost. So the, the Spirit got God thought life. So saints, let me give you a secret about the Holy Ghost. What the Holy Ghost will tell you, uh, 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 okay, you just sold a thousand, well, well sold 500. And the Holy Spirit talking to you because the, the, the Spirit of God know what God wants, what God is thinking. So the spirit, ah, this is so powerful, man. And this is apostolic and prophetic sowing. When the spirit is talking to you, the spirit is telling you what's going to jumpstart your life to the next degree of provision. The spirit will tell you what seed is going to work. That's why you can't lean to your own understanding. You can't, um, you can't sow based upon budget, sow based upon uh, bank account. You can't sow based upon those stuff. You got to sow based upon spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will speak amounts to you. And, and then after you did that, the Holy Spirit will come again and tell you to sow again. Are you missing your seed test? Or are you passing your seed test? Be careful that you don't hear another voice telling you how to invest when you're a sower. I know of a person. They said that while they were sowing, God told them to get a car, but that car ended up taking them out. You're not hearing me. That car was their own demise. It created their death. They're dead today. Listen to what I'm telling you. They said that God told them to get a car. Now, mind you, When you hear somebody saying God is guiding them, then you know then the nigga ain't going to hear nothing else. So you just, <laughs> you let niggas that say that they hear from God. Just If a nigga tell you they hear from God, that the nigga mean that don't tell me nothing, don't convince me nothing. I already heard what I need to hear. That's what that means. Got the car, dead. 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 When you are sower and God giving you sowing instructions, be very alert of the serpent tapping into the radio system. And then uh, trying to talk like God. Thou thine uh, by yourself a Buick. Down, thine by yourself. Saints, imagine the serpent often tries to sound like God while you're in the sowing flow so that you, you won't listen to God on sowing. You'll do your own thing. I'm giving you a lot of wisdom on here that you, you probably will never hear from nobody, from anywhere, from any place. 
I'm telling you a lot of apostolic and prophetic truths on here that are really digging and diving deep into so many things. When you are sowing prophetically, you'll hear God telling you stuff about sowing. You can't get so stuck that you don't listen to the next instruction because it may come swifter than you thought. Sometimes you'll say, well, God, okay, he ain't going to talk to me in two weeks. And God will talk to you in two days, in 24 hours. And you're like, oh, shoot. Don't get afraid and don't let your knees buckle. Never operate in the spirit of fear when God is instructing you financially. Because there is a pay off, a payout, and a payday. Oh, my God. And there's a back pay. Oh, my caraba sotomo. When the sower is flowing prophetically in the sowing anointing, there's a payoff, a pay out, a, 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 a back pay. There's a payday. All right. And that sower must not be afraid. If you let the spirit of fear grip you, you're communicating to God. I don't trust you. I got to make sure I'm good, Lord. You up there telling me all this stuff here, I, I, but I need to make sure I'm good. Gee, don't do that. Don't do that. That's, that's, that's nigga dumb. That's not kingdom. That's nigga dumb. That means a nigga is dumb. <laughs> don't, don't. Man, stick to kingdom. You see what I'm saying? You, you, got, you got to study how the flesh is still trying to rule you when God training you how to move in the Holy Ghost in this invincible economy. Now, saints, the economy does not remain invisible. It has a visibility. In due time. But many people don't make it to due time because weariness shorten their travel. Saints, what would you say if somebody was in a flight and they screamed at the top of their lungs and say, hey, I need to get off the flight. Right now. Everybody would be angry. People wouldn't even be concerned about that person's well-being. They'll just be angry that the person is up there speaking such stupid words. How? Now we up in the flight. You done made it this far. You done sold to get your ticket. Now you in the response of your ticket being given to you. You're flying now. You're about to reach the next destination. We only got about an hour left. And then the person scream out, hey, stop the flight. I need to get down. Watch this. Everybody will be upset somehow. Now, let's hop over to the kingdom. You done sold. You got your ticket. You got accessibility to the hundredfold, thousandfold, the blessing of the Lord, the harvests of God, the abundant life. And in the middle of your travel, you start getting weary and you start letting yourself take on thoughts of dishonor, disrespect, disobedience. And you start straying from the order in which God has set for you. You start following your own understanding. You start breaking rules, breaking standards, breaking hedges, choosing your own words, choosing your own ways, slipping and sliding. And all these different type of things is going on. Now watch this, people of God. As a result, we look at somebody that will say during the flight, we'll look at them as if they're crazy. But well, what about the person that they can't recognize that the harvest, the invisible account, supernatural money, money cometh, the land flowing with milk and honey, the wealthy place, increase more and more, prosperity and wealth, health. All these things are coming towards them, riches. And that person stops. 
The non-sower communicates to God the same way the sower communicates to God. The non-sower communicates to God, I hate you. I don't trust you. I don't need you. I don't want you. I'm good. I don't need your protection. I don't need your safety guidelines. I don't need your counsel. I don't need your help. I got this. I know how to keep myself. I know how to take care of myself. I know how to get to where I'm supposed to be. I know how to keep my own peace. I know how to give myself my own joy. I know how to protect my happiness. I don't need you. The non-sower communicates with their seedlessness. They tell God, I'm not connected to you. They tell God, I don't want a covenant with you. They tell God, I'm not looking for uh, your assistance in any way, shape or form. I got this myself. You mind your business, I'll mind my business. We often talk about how the seed talks to God. Well, seedlessness talks to God. And, and see, th this deep, because we don't hear that. We, 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 how, how, you heard me teach about how your seed communicates. Well, well, your, your, your seedlessness communicates as well. When people are not sowing, they're communicating a message to God that's very toxic. When people don't sow, they communicate a message to God of disrespect. They communicate a message of God of disconnection. Any man of God in ministry, woman of God in ministry, no matter who you is, you will never have to wonder of who is in your ministry. Just study the people that's sowing. People that don't sow, you don't have to wonder if that person is in your ministry. You don't have to wonder if that person is with you. You don't have to wonder if that person is, is a, a, a student of the anointing. You don't have to wonder because sowing is how God has set up to show you who's in the army and who's not. So the non-sower communicates to God, I'll protect me and Satan's relationship. Every non-sower is in relationship with the thief. Every non-sower, every person that don't believe in sowing, they are married to the thief. That's their husband, wife, whatever it is. You know, that's trans talk, hashtag trans. Anybody that is in a non-sowing flow, they're in marriage to the thief because the thief will govern the thief's house and make sure nobody in the thief's house is a sower. You got to understand the thief know how to control his house and make sure all of his wives, all of his children, all of his family are not sowers. The thief know how to subdue his household and, and nobody in the household is a sower. If you go to a thief and you go find out who in the house is honoring God, you won't find no damn body. Because the thief is a dictator of dishonor. Ah, the thief is a dictator of dishonor. And the thief robs thoughts that go in the direction of true worship. The thief won't even let your thought think long enough on sowing. The thief will have you worried about bills, chills, kills, steals, and cartwheels and, and, and nicotine pills. But the thief won't have you thinking about God's wills. You see what I'm saying? The, the, the thief will not allow the mind to contemplate sowing. And there are many people, they have been governed by the same thief in John 10.10 10, that say that they love Jesus. They've been governed by the same thief. The thief will have you try to escape sowing because that's what the thief does. The thief will have you justify not sowing. 
The thief will have you argue about sowing. Imagine how dumb you sound if God created you to honor him and God teaching you about honoring him and you could find an argument not to honor him. The non-sower talks to God. The non-sower talks to God. See, yeah, see, I'm underneath a raw apostolic anointed to do this. It takes a raw apostolic anointing. And see, it's a prophetic anointing. Remember what I told you, an apostle is a prophet that was promoted. So an apostle is very prophetic. And, and that's why God would trust him with that first office. The first office is not a prophet. The first office is an apostle. That's firstly, firstly, the apostle. Secondarily, the prophet. So when you're in an apostolic anointing, you got you to gotta catch that there's a strong prophetic anointing on you that, that you're so raw and so bold and so courageous and so obedient and so consistent and so pure that the father would say, let me promote you to first. I'm going to take you out of second, the picture first. And that first office bestows great authority. The apostle has reaping mantles for the sower inside of him. Mm. Mm. The apostle has harvest angels ready to do war on the sower's behalf. The apostle has various portals all around his body. The body of the apostle is invisible portals to heaven. So the apostle's hands, that's why apostle Paul told Timothy, you lay hands on no man sudden. Because that apostolic portal in the hand wasn't supposed to go to every man. Leva soya. Raze je je je. Jele. Hule maandi le viku fala. Raflash de diki flesh de des. Slef le celebes lesle. Oh! In the apostle's hand is a portal. The apostle's breath. The apostle's breath. His voice, his breath. Mm. That's why apostle, the apostle have uh, even the glory of God and the power of God move through that breath. There's an impartation. The apostle's breath, the apostle's mouth, the apostle's eyes. That's why Apostle Paul was staring at that man. And when he, he stared out for long enough, he said, rise up, rise up, ri rise up. Because as soon as he saw, he saw that man step into the portal that he was in. He was staring that man down to see his eyes. And the minute that him and that man's eyes locked together, he knew you healed. Because you're in my world now. When you step into my eyes, you step into my soul. My soul is in the heavenly places. It's in the throne of God. The minute you get in there, we staring. You're locked in. When you're in oneness with me, you're in there. The apostle's feet is a wealth gate. Somebody write that down. Your apostle's feet is wealth promotion. Your apostle's feet is a money classroom. Your apostle's feet is a money mantle. Your apostle's feet has prosperity, wealth, and abundance giving angels. And they are excited about the new assignment for those that are sowing into that apostle at his feet. 
The apostle's body is full of portals. The apostle's body is full of portals. The apostle's body is full of portals. I'm going to say something you ain't never heard before. I'm going to say something you ain't never heard before. Apostle Paul couldn't have sex with none of those women of that day. Because there was no woman in that day that had the soul to receive what he was carrying. In that generation, though, there wasn't a woman that was apostolically ready for his level to receive an impartation sexually from Apostle Paul. So Apostle Paul was in a dispensation in that time. There was not a woman in that day that, that was, was, was ready for that type of impartation he would bring. Now, saints, imagine the anointing way stronger now. So I just want to say this. Women are way more powerful today because the anointing way stronger than Apostle Paul. <laughs> the grace and the glory way, way heavier than Apostle Paul. So just think about this. Apostle Paul, the, the woman couldn't handle that stuff back then. Imagine and he was he was at a lesser level. To where it is now. The apostolic anointing way strong right now. And saints, what a lot of people miss that COVID-19 shows you that grace has went to the next level. Shabasoko. COVID-19 is evidence that the grace of God is at, at its intensity right now. It's increased. Because saints, remember, wherever sin abounds, wherever anything of sin abounds, grace much more abounds. So saints, you know how we see like little drops of famine? That means that the wealth anointing of the Holy Ghost is way stronger now than ever before. Money come, money come it to me now. It's, it's, way, it's way higher. It's way higher now. Because of the economic downfalls and the government shutdowns. Money! Come it to me now. It's way stronger now than ever before. Way higher than ever before. It's way high. Money! Come it to me now. It's way higher than ever. Once you see darkness rising up. God's power is way higher than ever before. When sickness rise up, the healing anointing is stronger than ever before. When foolishness rise up, confusion rise up, sin rise up, perversion rise up, power from God is at an all-time high. Somebody shout. 